That blade right there, friends, is toast. I think it's about a half acre. I'm not even sure. We'll call it a half acre. So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. It's a nice day in Tennessee, even though it rained for most of the morning. Now, I wasn't going to do a video today, but I just got a phone call about some logs I got to go pick up. I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to answer a question I get in a lot of these videos from a lot of you new sawyers, which is, where do you get your logs at? Hopefully today I can enlighten you guys, and it may help you out. So I got two logs to go pick up. One's a 10-footer and one's a 14-footer, so that cancels out the dump trailer. I guess we'll be taking the iron bull today. And if you're wondering why there's a ramp missing, I had to take that off a few weeks ago to haul that new mower into the farm. I need to put that back on there. I just haven't got around to it yet. I've been kind of busy editing videos, editing videos, answering emails. And then I mentioned editing videos. Seems like that's all I get done anymore. Editing videos. Now, when it comes to a sawmill, logs are extremely important. You can't have one without the other, especially if you're selling lumber. It doesn't do no good to have a mill if you don't have anything to saw. And for those of you that are new to this business, and also for those of you that are looking for a better source, maybe your log yard closed down or the guy you bought from retired, who knows, all kinds of situations out there. In my career of sawing since 2011, I've went through several different tree sources or log sources, and it still changes every year, it seems like. But if you're just starting out, one of the best sources you can have for logs is a tree service. And a lot of the times, it won't cost you a dime, but always be sure you take them out to lunch or send them a Christmas card with a gift certificate in it because they're doing you a favor. But sometimes, they will require you to buy those from them. And that's just really case by case basis. I didn't cross these chains in a video one time. I just forgot about it and overlooked it. And I tell you what, you guys made me pay for that down the comments. You would have thought that I'd have killed a cat on camera or something. So if you guys want to, jump in the truck with me. We'll go grab them. Shouldn't take but about an hour. All right, guys, it's about two days later. As soon as I got these logs home the other day and backed the trailer in, it started raining and it rained for the next two days. It's all it's been doing here lately is raining. Kind of hard to get anything done. Let's take a look at these poplars, guys. These are pretty good ones. All right, friends, so these two logs came from Greg Barrett, my good friend that runs a tree service the next county over. This one right here is probably the lowest grade of the two but it's not too bad for poplar. There are several knots, but they're kind of small. We can deal with those. I think this one's about a 10 footer. Then behind it, this one's about a 14 footer. This is the butt cut of the tree, nice and straight. We got a few knots up there on the far end, but other than that, pretty good saw log right there. Actually, both of them are pretty good. All right, friends, so getting back to the theme of this video, 
or the theme of the intro of this video. We're gonna be doing a lot of stuff today, guys. These logs were free. They came from a tree service, and that goes back to what I was talking about earlier. You want to find tree guys in your area, arborists, whatever you want to call them, and make friends with those guys and let them know that you're looking for logs. And you don't care to pay for them, but a lot of the times like this, if you'll go out to the job site and get them, it won't cost you nothing. There's a 100% chance they would have went to the landfill. That's where a lot of the brush goes on these tree jobs. If they don't chop them up with the chipper, they'll put all the limbs in a brush truck, all these big logs, take them to the landfill, and that's where they end up at. Now, they don't go to waste because the landfill uses stuff like this in order to make their layers in the landfill. And I'm not sure how to describe that, but it's kind of like a lasagna. The guys tell me up at the landfill when I go up there, the wood chips are very vital to keep that going. So they really don't go to waste if you look at it that way, but all the brush and the limbs go to the landfill, so they're used there, and the logs come to me, and we'll saw these into lumber. So for you guys out there that are trying to find logs, and you email me all the time, because you're saying, hey, Nathan, I've got a saw mill, I'm having trouble finding logs. Get on Craigslist, get on Facebook Marketplace, and look for a tree service and start meeting those guys and tell them what you're looking for. And sooner than later, your phone will be ringing every day like mine. Got the hatefulest cat on YouTube with us today. Hello there, mama. Mama, you gonna talk to everybody or be hateful as usual? Yep, hateful as usual. One more thing here about logs, friends, and we'll move on to something else. I do buy from loggers, but it's not very often. I know a lot of you guys may be thinking since I'm a sawmill, I probably deal directly with loggers and that's it. That's not the case. I'm a one man sawmill, you know, one man operation. And you guys see on this channel, I'm not real fast getting things done. It's kind of slow when you got one guy working all the time, plus your video and most of the stuff you're doing. And that makes you even slower. So having said all that, I do get logs from uh, loggers sometimes, but it's few and far between because most loggers are wanting to sell truckloads at a time. If I pull up at a trailer, and I want to buy three logs, they usually don't want to fool with me. They want the guy that wants to tell them where to come and unload their truck and bring three or 4,000 feet at a time. So a logger will work with you, but they're not going to be your primary guy they call because they're more about quantity and not about selling two or three logs at a time. So if you're a small sawmill like myself, one man operation, I think a tree service is your best source for logs if you're getting started. And heck, I've been in this business now for 13 years, I guess it is, 2011, 13 years. I'd do my math there for a second. And after 13 years, tree service guys are still my number one source for logs. And it could change next year, but right now, and previous years leading up to this, that's where I get most of my stuff from. And it works out really good. It's really good for the tree service and for me. So the first thing we need to work on, guys, I need to run up here to Napa and get some oil the T25 tractor, I need to get engine oil and some hydraulic oil as well. And that's gonna be painful because that stuff ain't cheap. So according to the weatherman, we should have a good week of weather here at the farm. No rain until Thursday, and I'm going out of town Thursday, so I won't matter then. But we got a lot to get done this week, friends. I got three good-sized walnut logs that belong to a customer, and they're in front of the sawmill right now. We'll probably slab out one of those today, and then Dad's coming over tomorrow to help me do the other two, and to also, more importantly, assist with stacking those up on stickers for air drying. Looks like we are just about to Napa and they are busy. Most of the cars here are for the feed store. The feed store in Napa is one big building and uh, most of the time the feed store, especially this time of year being springtime, it's pretty crowded. <laughs> For those that are interested, oil is not getting any cheaper nowadays. Five gallons of this tractor hydraulic fluid for tractors, $86. 
and a gallon of Rotella, which is about four quarts, $22. Ain't nothing getting cheaper. Guys, now we're gonna get the 754 and use the last tech mower and mow this half acre field real fast. We cut this for hay in the past, but this year, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. Now this field right here definitely needs some fertilizer and probably some lime. And I meant to do some soil samples back in the winter and send them off to see what it needs. And I haven't done that yet, but I can still do it. There's no deadline on that. But right now, I think I'm just gonna keep mowing it. And we'll probably do some soil testing here in a few weeks and see what it needs and maybe go from there. I don't know if we'll cut hay on this field or not this year. Probably not, but you never know. guys let me give you an update on the baby chicks they are growing every day hello girls i would say here in about three weeks you guys will probably go outside maybe four weeks i don't know the wife is in charge of all things chicken around here so i need to ask her i guess when we're taking these guys outside shouldn't be too long though they're getting some good size to them all right, friends, we got this front half acre mowed. I think it's about a half acre. I'm not even sure. We'll call it a half acre. We got it finished up. It looks really good. I also went ahead and mowed that acre in front of the creek where the log splitter is right below the burn pile. I took care of that as well. But before we head up here and work on this walnut, I need to go over to my other property right across the road and mow one more acre in front of the... Uh, mother-in-law house over there the mother-in-law house that doesn't sound right my mother-in-law's house the house that i own that i rent to my mother-in-law that sounds a whole lot better i got about one acre to mow over there and that shouldn't take us just a few minutes guys so let's go knock that out while the weather's nice then we'll come back up here to the mill and work on this walnut you guys hang in there what else you got better to do
guys, we're finally up here at the sawmill. And before we start on this walnut, I need to edge, it looks like, two cedar boards. It shouldn't take too long. guys this is black walnut it's a 10 footer this is a customer log we've got a void right there it goes in about 16 inches that's not good but could be worse and the pith on this log which is the very center of the tree is right there and that's really off centered from the middle i mean if that's nowhere near where you want it to be that's gonna be hard to get squared up on both ends i bet on the other end it's probably down here somewhere. This is a yard tree. And with yard trees, guys, you never know what you're gonna get. That's why they're usually lower grade. And that's why most of the time, the large sawmills around here and a lot of the timber buyers don't touch yard trees for that reason right there. That's a huge defect right there. Not only the void, but the pith being way off center. All right, guys, real fast, what do you guys think about the format of these videos? I'm trying to show everything we're doing here at the property and still do some saw milling. If I just do saw milling and that's it, it kind of makes this channel one dimensional. And I think it gets kind of stagnant. That's why I'm trying to show a lot of tractor stuff and excavator stuff mixed in with it. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Hopefully you're enjoying these vlog style uh, videos where I pretty much just take the cameras with me all day long and show you guys the work I've got to get done. So down here on the operator's side, I have it turned this way just so I can come in here on my first cut and get rid of that. That's gonna serve no purpose right there. Need to get rid of it. And right there's the pith. And on this end, it's more toward the middle. So I'll have to do the best I can as far as getting this centered in the middle of a slab. We're doing nine edge, nine edge, my goodness. Come on, Nathan. We're doing nine quarter live edge slabs. If you're new to this channel, that's two and a quarter inches on the thickness. And a better way to explain that is you want the pith parallel to the saw bed. Right now, this is the log. Down here, it's up high and over here, it's in the middle. So right now it's like this. I'm going to use my toe boards to try to get it parallel with the bed. You want it coplanar with the saw bed all the time when you do live edge slabs. You don't want that pith in two slabs. You want to capture it in one if possible. There's been times that, you know, and this may be one of those times where you don't get it captured in one slab and you have it in two different ones. In those cases, I would probably discard the pith and have shorter slabs or uh, less width on your slabs on the sides of those. I hope that made sense. Hopefully it does. There's a bunch of mud on this log right here. My goodness. I kind of wish the debarker was on this side today. <laughs> on the sawmill, we've got a Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. That blade has been on there for a few days. We may have a blade change today, I don't know. If you want to try those blades, call Joe Main. Cell phone number is in the video description. Let me grab a water and we'll get started. This should be a decent log and hopefully there's no metal, but this is a yard tree, so who knows?
So let's check the pith and see how I did as far as getting it coplanar with the saw bed. I think I'm off just a little, but we will check it just to make sure. I'll do this one handed while holding the camera. So right there is the pith. And from the top of the cut, we are an inch and three quarters down. An inch and three quarters. Kind of hard to see it, but the pith is right there in the middle. Now down here in the operator's side, let me hang the measuring tape. We are about three quarters of an inch down. So I'm off about one inch. But since I'm cutting nine quarter slabs, that will capture this pith in the middle of the next slab and that's what you want. So I'm okay with that. I wish it was perfect on both ends because I'm weird like that, but that's not too bad. I'll take it. Now off camera, before I made my first cut, I went back and forth several times with the tow boards and the chain roller making some adjustments so I could get that pretty close. I thought I was off just a little, but I thought I was close enough to get it in one slab and that's what we did. So good deal. I always take the time on these live edge slabs, friends, on these logs to make sure the pith is really close to being coplanar to the saw bed. And more importantly, you capture it inside of one slab and not two. That blade right there, friends, is toast. I'm surprised we was able to finish that log. All right, friends, we got that one finished up. We got six live edge slabs out of it with a total board footage of 204. Not too bad on a log like that. Now tomorrow, dad's gonna come help me because we got this monster right here to go in the sawmill. It's another black walnut and it's about 10 feet in length. And it's a little bit wider than the one we just sawed. And there's a smaller one right behind that one. So dad will be with us tomorrow and I will be videoing that. And we'll knock this one open and see what it looks like. That right there should be a good one. All right, guys, I think I'm done for the night and I apologize for not showing you guys the slabs that we cut today. My mother-in-law had a problem with one of her appliances. So I had to run over there twice this afternoon and work on that. By the time I got back up here and finished up this log, it was getting dark and I need to get down to the house and edit this footage and eat dinner. So in the next video, I'll make it up to you. We'll throw some water on that big one that me and dad are on saw into tomorrow. So uh, I think I'm done. I think that's all I need to cover on this video. Yep, that's about it. You guys have a good night. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you guys back here tomorrow. Mm -hmm.